Hi there, I'm Ben and welcome to part 3 of my full platinum walkthrough of Dark Souls 3. Next up we're going to the Undead Settlement. This is quite a long video as you can see, there is a lot to do there. It's almost like two areas in one, it's kind of a forking path. That sounded a bit weird. <laughs> um, yeah, first thing we're going to do, I said at the beginning, at the end of the last video, I need some arrows. So I'm going to go over here and just grab the whole lot. I've got 950 souls, I'm going to spend the whole lot, get 95 arrows. Uh, they're going to come in really handy, uh, so buy some arrows as well. If you need to, crack a, a hard soul to get some souls, or just go and kill a few enemies and come back. Get yourself some arrows. Goodbye. 95 will see you, obviously, if you have that many. Uh, a good 50 or so, at least. Uh, so you've got plenty. And we'll also equip the Tear Stone Ring, which we will unequip later, but, I mean, it's better than having nothing. Don't put the Ring of Sacrifice on, because it will break if you die. And uh, yeah, on we go to the Undead Settlement. I'm going to start right at the beginning, you know, we were, where we went to pit, uh, meet Yol. I'm going to go there because I realised that I forgot one of the items, the soul item that's to the left of the bonfire. So we'll start there and quickly grab that. Do you remember where we are from the end of the what, last one? I'm going to go and grab this item here. And I was thinking I'll just warp to the bonfire because it's, it's on the other side of that gate, but I might as well just run down. It's about the same. <laughs> Plus we get some extra souls from these guys. There, you can see that little pause there. That's me thinking, no, I'll just go down here. It's just as quick. And we'll get some souls. So there is one boss fight in this... Uh, uh, well, kind of one and a half, I would say. There's a mini boss. It doesn't have a, a proper life bar at the bottom or anything, but it's not easy. <laughs> but the yeah, just the one boss, really. And he's a nice simple one, so nothing too stressful in this area at all. Uh, one thing I'll mention as well, I've not I don't think I've mentioned this, hopefully I have, or if not anyway, I'll just remind you. Don't sell anything. Uh, well, I mean, you, you can sell weapons, there's no reason to sell anything. You're going to get more than enough souls for everything you need. But most importantly, rings and things like that. For the ring trophy, you need to own every single ring. So if you, like the Ring of Sacrifice, if you break it and don't get a new one, which you can quite easily, but just as an example, um, then you won't get the trophy. So yeah, don't sell anything, just keep hold of everything. What I do though, and I do at the end of this video, which I'm going to do at the end of every video if I remember, is store everything we don't need to keep the inventory as clean as possible. Uh, all items I keep hold of, all weapons and armor, uh, I'm going to get rid of. So a couple of uh, new-ish enemies, they're just kind of, they're a bit more erratic, or what's the word I'm thinking of? Um, unreadable. There's a word there, I know there's a word that I can't think of right now. Uh, in their movements, you can't read them as easily. They they move a bit weirder than you think you might, a bit of a delay in their, their attacks. So you want this 100% shield is going to help, this 100 damage shield. Uh, I'll just say here, repair powder in the bottom corner underneath your weapon. Uh, you'll see there's a little red bar, because there's a little black bit on that bar underneath the blades. It's repair powder and things like that. You're not going to break your weapons. Dark Souls 2 was horrible for it, breaking weapons. Dark Souls 3, you're not going to do it. It, ref it fixes every time you rest, and you'll, you'll, you'll rest more often than you, you need to do that. So I hit that body, and it dropped down. Uh, remember to do that, that's quite an important thing for later on. Uh, we're going to grab that once we go down here. Now these sort of clerics, I forget what the actual term is. I'm not very good with words, am I? Um, these are a real pain. They can be. If you Later on when we do New Game Plus and Plus Plus, you'll run through these guys quite easily. But um, they have really odd movements in their attacks. Again... Um, it's, it looks like they're not going to hit you, or they don't have time to, but all of a sudden you've taken a hit, and you don't even know how they did it, uh, which you will see later on. So get the bow out, do a few shots. It's not actually dead for me yet. It ran underneath, but uh, I might as well go and see it from around here. So watch out for these guys as well. They quite The thralls are quite annoying, especially later on in, uh, in the church. They, oh my god, this, they just appear. Most of the times they're hanging off a building or something and they'll just drop on top of you. Quite annoying. So yeah, finish them off. They do have a ranged attack, these uh, these women. And it's not too bad, of a, it's not too much of a problem. It's quite slow and easy to dodge, but just get rid of them. It's actually their melee that's more of a problem and they have a really uh, powerful grab as well. 
So I'm going to use some bombs here just to demonstrate barrels. It, it kind of works, I suppose, but I mean, it's just as simple to uh, get these one at a time. You see I'm not moving too forward. I don't want to wake everybody up. I just want one at a time. Uh, and that body that I dropped down earlier, I grabbed the item from that. That's Loretta's bone. You remember Grey Rat, the guy that we saved in the prison? He asked you to go and give Loretta the ring, the blue, blue tear stone ring. That's obviously Loretta. You've got her bone. She didn't make it. So uh, what you need to do is to give him Loretta's bone. He'll uh, sort of go into a kind of a depressive state, obviously, as you would. Uh, the next time you go into Phylink after giving him the bone. And then he'll give you the curl up or you'll learn the curl up, curl up gesture, which is what we want. But he will start venturing out and he's our source of arrows or decent arrows anyway so we're not going to give him Loretta's bone so don't give it him yet we'll do that before we move into New Game Plus just to keep him around and prolong his agony I suppose <laughs> uh, make sure you grab this item under the tree it's an Esther shard, very important um, yeah don't give it to him we'll do it right at the end uh, keep him around for now yeah, so grab all the items, and then there's going to be some more in the tree. So there's a couple more. There should be a, a couple more enemies around here. You can see I'm just kind of picking them off. If there's big groups, there's, usually you can just sort of edge forward a bit. One will notice you back away, kill them. You know, you get the idea. So you can see there's two guys there. There's the one which I'm following here, and there's one to the right still. So I'm just slowly, I'm like a, a cat <laughs> ready to pounce. <laughs> Waiting for him to go underneath. There we go, that's one. Now I'm looking for the other one. He's not other body. That's the body I just shot down from the tree. Get some cookery. They're like a throwable blade. Not anything we'll use, to be honest. Here's another random item. Some more charcoal pine resin, which is not the one in the top corner. That was random. Uh, charcoal, pa charcoal pine resin you add to weapons. I'm still looking for this guy. I know he's around here. I don't want him to sneak up on me. There's one under there, which I definitely know. Um, you add it to your weapon, and it adds fire. So we will actually be using that in there later on. Human pine resin is one of the most important ones for us to get for a certain boss. Uh, but yeah, any of them. We'll have lots of them, all different buffs for all different bosses, and I'll tell you what's good against who. Now these things in the cage are one of the more annoying enemies in the game. Uh, it's actually, I'm going to advise you to switch a weapon to the rapier, which is you should have to the right hand side, or any weapon that is thrust damage. Because you, it's actually quite clever. Uh, you obviously thrusting through the cage and hitting the thing in the cage. If you use our normal weapon, the cell sword, twin blades, it's uh, a slash, so you're sort of hitting the cage from the side. So it's actually quite accurate, it's pretty cool. So uh, to kill those easy and do more damage, get a, a pokey weapon <laughs> and hit them with that. I'm gonna get that, that body down there. Now this is a way you would go to carry on, but we're not actually gonna do this. All we've come down here for is the Warrior of Sunlight Covenant, uh, which is one of the main covenants that we need and is the one that you wanna use uh, when Inv not invading, helping other players. So to get the, the sunlight medals which you need, we need 30 of those. We need a lot. It's one of the, the items that we need the most of. Um, so you can equip it. Uh, if you On the right hand side of your equip menu you can equip your uh, covenant items there. And when it's equipped you're kind of a member and then you can lay your um, sign down in front of a boss. Get the soapstone, lay your sign down and then you can join other people, help them with bosses, and you'll earn a Sunlight Medal. And also, if uh, somebody helps you with a boss and they are in the Covenant, then you'll get a medal from them as well, as long as they survive. Uh, so yeah, I'm just showing you sort of a shortcut. So there's two thralls here. That's the place we were just through. There's a tunnel going through to the next area. We're not actually going to use it at all. But just for reference, remember where we are now. And uh, I'll, I'll sort of link up so you know we've gone in sort of a full circle. It's late, it's about half an hour later on. Uh, we'll get to the other end, but we're going to go the long way and uh, get plenty of other things out of the way. I swear that when they throw firebombs, the enemies, uh, I sort of stand there and then I'll move away. It's like the firebomb gains extra momentum as you move away to try and track you. It's I swear it does, it definitely does. Uh, in here, these two guys will wake up. Make sure you quickly kill one and back away because the other one gets up pretty quickly. Obviously, he's got one of those pitchforks, he can reach quite a distance. 
a uh, large soul there. We're going to have a big, bigger thrall drop down. These ones have a sword. Quite easy to backstab because they are slow. But as you're going to see, they have a really slow animation for getting up. And you can't actually hit them. Some enemies, you can hit them um, as they're getting up. Uh, but some of them, like this guy, you can't. So I was just charging my R2 because, of course, I was. And uh, it didn't do anything. So delay it a bit for these guys. Open those doors up. We're actually going to go back up onto the roof now. Where there are lots of thralls. And we're going to go and join... Or get the trophy for another covenant, which is a bit of a teleport. Now this doesn't go as well as I would have hoped, really. But there's a thrall up on that roof there. You can see there's also one on the left on the roof. You kind of see him there. Um, they shoot arrows. Oh, it's kind of like a blow dart that they use almost. Uh, they're quite annoying because there's going to be two or three. Is it two or three? There's definitely two on the floor as well. So. Yeah, you can see the one on the left has woken up. I was trying not to do that. Um, yeah, they, they sh oh, they're just so annoying. <laughs> uh, yeah, just trying to get rid of this one from a distance. Drop is a thing as well with the arrows, so you need to aim up slightly. That was probably too much that time. Can be a bit annoying. We're going to get... There we go. So just get rid of one of them is going to help. And then you've got one here standing on the side. Yeah, there's three. There's the one on the side on this one. Even though I knew he was there, he's still managing to get hits in. And then they back away so quickly and do the big sweep. Just one of the annoying enemies. So slowly go around this corner. You can see there's going to be one right there. He's going to bounce off. If you can bounce them off your shield, that's obviously best. Because it's going to kind of stun them a bit. Titanite Shard, which is nice. You should definitely have enough to do the uh, the next upgrade on the Titanite with the Titanite shards by the time we go back. Get some more fire bombs; they'll always come in handy. And we'll uh, drop down and walk around here for the plank shield, which is obviously a joke weapon. It's completely useless. Uh, and then speak to this one. Don't hit it. Not that it particularly matters, but if you speak to it, I've skipped ahead there. It's going to explain about well cryptically explain about the next um, covenant that we're going to go and do and climb up here this is where he was <laughs> look at that <laughs> what an embarrassing position to die in I don't know how he's actually doing that we'll go around here get this homeward bone so we haven't used homeward bones yet I will be using it very shortly so I'll explain then what that does but I will just also explain about rings and spells. So by the time this guide is complete, there will be a link in the description for a page on my website which will have a rundown of every spell. This guy is not hostile, so don't hit him. Every spell and ring and everything on it, so look out for that link in the future. Uh, what I'm trying to do here is get on this side, because that body, body, whenever you hit it, will drop down below. So if you can kind of stand in front of it a bit, because uh, you want to grab it to get that ring. Don't worry if it did drop down. I'll show you uh, where to pick it up later. It just saves messing around. But uh, yeah, it always seems to try and fall off. So as soon as you hit it, keep pressing X to try and pick the ring up as it falls. And then uh, walk behind that guy with a cage. Press X, jump in his cage, and you'll be taken down here. This is the boss arena later on, looking up there. You fall into this place later on. Do this now because this guy here will die after you do the boss. So go speak to him. And he'll uh, talk to you about the new Mound Makers. Another Covenant. Another one we need to farm lots of items for. Which is just smashing. So say indeed when he asks you the question. And moving forward a bit. Once you kind of speak to him a bit more, you get the Mound Makers Covenant item, and of course the trophy up there. And then keep speaking to him more, and he'll give you a Homeward Bone. Now, I I can't remember if I did mention what Homeward Bones do, uh, but he's definitely giving it, and we need one to get out of here, there's no bonfire. Uh, it's an item, consumable item, you use it just once, you can only use it once, obviously. And uh, you go back to the last bonfire you sat at, or the bonfire at Firelink. So vertebra shackles are what we need here. Definitely one of, if not the worst item to farm. I, I there's no way around it. I'm not going to say it's not that bad. It's, it's horrible. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, yeah, so I'm going to use a bone. And we're going to go to the bonfire last rested at, which is right at the start, unfortunately. But we do need to get that out of the way. And then means we're going to have to run back. Uh, but we're going to be going through that door that we opened. So unfortunately, we do need to kill all these guys again. But there you go. Just think of it as extra souls and extra practice. So you may notice I have been picking up armor and not changing it. Uh, armor is obviously important. They have different stats. It's nothing I've ever particularly bothered about, though. You could spend hours going through all the armor sets and saying, this one's better against lightning, this one's better against fire, this one's going to give me slightly better physical, but it's a bit heavier, which means I'll move slower, blah de blah de blah Or you could just learn to roll better. <laughs> That's... I know it's a bit of a, an elitist almost thing to say, just get better. It doesn't... Obviously, some people don't, and they might rely on armor. But honestly, that's the advice I would say, is don't worry about all the stats being in the armor. It's it's not that much of a difference. Getting better at rolling and le learning the timing of a boss you're struggling on, or an enemy, or what have you, is going to help you out a lot more than worrying about what the uh, stats of your armor are. So I don't particularly change it very often. I'll have this starting armor, and then I'll get the Knight Artorius armor, because I think it looks kind of cool, So and that'll be it pretty much and then I'll be storing most of the armor that I get obviously feel free to to juggle the armor uh, the obviously one might want to look different for a start um, but obviously there is that weight issue I like to stay light as well so I can carry things around and uh, move quickly so we're going out this door now grab this round shield uh, we'll never use it <laughs> it's worse than the one we're using right now Certain shields are good for the buffs that they give you. So drop down here, uh, try and get the guy, and then watch out for the pick, pitchfork one. He's always going to be behind you. Grab the titanite shard, so you definitely should be ready for another upgrade now. Uh, do watch out, there's firebombs being thrown at you from above. Nothing in that corner. And there's a bonfire in here. So we're going to light that. And we're going to travel back to Firelink and do a few bits before we move on. So first thing is we're going to look at the upgrades. I don't have uh, enough for another one, but just in case you didn't have, you should have now. At the end of the last video, I mean. So go upgrade if you're able to. I need another three yet, which we will get by the end of this video. And then reinforce the Estus Flask because we did pick that shard up. And at this point here, I'm going to go and buy another spell. So you if you should have some souls from what we've just done. There's Grey Rat. So he's the one with Loretta's bone. Do not give it to him yet. Wait on till, uh, till near the end. Otherwise he will go and he can die if you don't set it up properly. And uh, yeah, we're gonna if depending on how many souls you have, obviously purchase purchase some of this. We want to purchase all five of his spells, uh, so we don't miss any because he is he is going to die, uh, and then he, obviously you can't buy them. Now you don't need to save souls like I'm doing right now. What I'm what I'm doing right now is going to speak to the shrine maiden because she does sell a key that we need later on, but. I forgot when I came running over here. We don't actually have the ability to buy the key yet because uh, we need to give her the ashes, which we don't have yet. There's, as you find ashes throughout the world, certain ashes, you bring them back to the Shrine Maiden and then she will sell you um, different items. Her inventory will, be, will grow. And this key is only available once we get to the ashes in Undead Settlement, which is... Did I just say once? Uh, which is... I think they're the Mortician's ashes. Uh, so yeah, we'll grab those and we'll come back because it just opens up a, an extra bit to uh, free another NPC. Uh, but we will integrate it so you won't have to do much running back. So back to the bonfire that we just rested at and we're going to go up here to get these firebomb guys and actually uh, free another NPC. Speaking of which, completely different one to the other, other one I just mentioned. Uh, watch out, these guys are... Yeah, he fell off, <laughs> which is quite annoying because there's quite a difficult enemy underneath him. And yeah, this explosion there that gets me is from the guy underneath. 
That was a hell of a shot. So we'll be down there later on. That's where we're heading next. This gate game just looks amazing. The way how everything is so open. If you see it, you can go to it. And we will be going to it. Speak to this guy in the cage. Ask to learn pyromancies. This is our pyromancy guy for the game. And then he'll do the Dark Souls thing and just magically vanish. Which, why didn't he just do in the first place? And uh, you can go, if you want to do a pyromancy build, then you will need to go to him. Uh, well, if you want to do that, you will have started as one. But if you want to switch any time, uh, you need to go to him. He'll be in file link now near uh, the smith. And go and get the pyromancy flame off him for free. And then, um, yeah, do pyromancy. I will go and get it. I'll show you where it is after. But if you want to go and do it now, if you want to go into that, then uh, you can. Yeah, these guys are obviously quite strong, and uh, they're surprisingly quick as well. And because uh, they have that board on the back, you cannot backstab them, which is a like a big notice, isn't it? You cannot. We are not letting you backstab these guys. That would make them too easy. So yeah, if they if you move too far away, which we, you will see later on, if you move too far away from them, they'll throw that pot at you and get out a big saw blade and. Throw <laughs> hit you with that which is probably worse fire clutch ring that's obviously one that we need so grab that that's actually something you want for pyromancy speaking of which uh, it increases your fire damage your fire attack so looping back round this is where we drop down we'll go down there later so you kind of know where we are and then we'll move on so we've gone to the right hand side of the fork of the area that I mentioned at the beginning we're on the right hand side and we're going to kind of go underneath through a sewer to the left side. That'll be later on. So I'm just looking all the corners. I know there's an item in one of the corners. I couldn't remember which. It's actually around the back of this house, which we'll get. Uh, I'll get it in a minute. I've just realised there where it is, so I'll go and get that. It's around here. Uh, there's going to be a thrall drop on you as well, so watch out. Shield up. There he is. Luckily he missed. Now, you may have just seen one of those uh, those ladies off to the left. You can just see it with the top there. She'll start on the right-hand side by the bridge. Uh, and she'll keep walking. So let her walk past. You don't want to have to deal with her. Obviously, guard against the dog. Let it hit your shield. Gives you more than enough time to kill it. Now, this guy with a pitchfork. You'll see me keep looking at him. No, he's not, not, not noticing. I'll get him in a minute. Not noticing, I'm free to go and get this dog because I know this is in here and can be annoying. It'll just jump in behind you. And he's there. <laughs> he knew I was watching him. Anyway. Uh, so we don't actually need to go in this cellar yet, but this is where we're going to go underneath afterwards. Now you'll see these pot guys. There's three of them here. Don't move quickly across this bridge. Unfortunately, they do both get activated at the same time. They'll both see you at the same time. There, straight. Ah, that's no fun. And they will throw the pot at you as they get close. I was kind of moving this side, trying to help, hope he would drop down, but he was having none of it. So, yeah, they'll run at you like this, and they'll slam, and they are really quick with the way that they turn back around. I'm trying to just go for it, because I want to get rid of them uh, before the other one turns up, because uh, two of these guys together is not fun. So, um, I was late. It didn't work. So, I'm going to run up here, and I'm going to try and drop on top of the weaker one of the two that one to try and kill him which I do just and get out of the way so they're doing to go into a flurry of attacks they'll kind of slam on the floor and they'll start slamming that's the best time to get them again though here we go just kind of do it I should have gone more to the left hand side otherwise he wouldn't have uh, been able to hit me but they do they just swing that thing backwards here he's gonna go this is a good time to attack when they're doing that one. Again, they're so quick <laughs> with that swing. Nope, not dropping anything. This one here you can ignore if you don't go near him. He's set up to drop on you later on. That's what he's there for. Uh, so you can actually just walk past him. And then around this corner there's going to be two more dogs. Uh, alluring skulls, obviously I mentioned these before, these are good for um, 
getting NPCs to fall off things, so we'll be doing <laughs> using those. Also dogs. So I'm look, walking up here, and you can see me looking up. This is where that body would have dropped down. You know that ring I said? Uh, if you don't manage to grab it, it will drop down onto the floor here. There it is up there, that body. If it's not on the floor, it might have reset up there, so you'll have to go and knock it down, or you can shoot it from an arrow down here, but it will probably stay up there, which is just annoying, and you'll have to run around and get it. Speak to this guy. Uh, he's got nothing much to say really at this point and then we'll go through this door This is actually the way out of this area, but we're coming up here for a uh, specific reason first And then here is kind of an old friend if you played the first game The grand entrance There he is. It's not him. It's Sieg Vard Sieg Vard this guy's called and not Sigmaia was the first one, wasn't he? So go through his dialogue, exhaust his dialogue, always exhaust dialogue when speaking to NPCs. Uh, run onto the lift, jump back off it, and then go up. There we go, we've figured it out for him because he was struggling to get up. All the way up. On the way up, actually take notice of the board uh, below. So it's facing this way. Uh, as we go down which we're doing in a moment the only reason we're coming up here is to speak to the giant so this guy here don't hit him you want him friendly <laughs> talk to him he's gonna ask who you are who are you make peace and that's it I help anytime now he is throwing you can just kind of make out a tree over there kind of um, white trees branch thing that we just got is part of the tree uh, when you're near those trees they fire big large arrows and if you're not friendly they hit you but if you are friendly he'll kill enemies for you and there's a lot around it so that's going to come in helpful later on right Sigurd we're going to be get moving on with him now so fully exhaust his dialogue again until he starts repeating himself quit out do a backup save then come back in because we need him to survive you can see that big demon down there uh, if if he dies, he dies. What's that from? Rocky IV. <laughs> uh, if he dies, then we can't move on with his quest. So, yeah, we need gestures from him, so don't let him die. And, uh, yeah, this guy looks great. This is like the half-boss I mentioned at the start. It looks difficult. It, it's really not that difficult. He's really slow. Uh, I'm actually going to double hand for the most part. You get underneath him, and if he does the jump you'll need to back away but for the most part you can kind of just stay underneath him unless he pushes you away that way so he does do the fire that's quite a good time to get behind him and get a lot of damage in and then that's it so double hand l1 you'll do lots of damage very quickly and you'll get the fire gem so that is obviously uh one of the gems we're going to use to infuse a weapon so we definitely need that and then you're going to speak to Siegmeier, uh, Siegmeier, Siegvard. Uh, he's going to give you the Sieg Brow, which is a brew type thing. Uh, I think it gives you health. I've, not, I've never actually used one. Um, and then he's going to give you the toast gesture. And then after that, he's going to go to sleep because they always do. Uh, when he does that, speak to him when he's sleeping. It does take quite a while. It doesn't seem like anything's happening. But speak to him. And he, he's just going to sit there kind of snoring. And once that finishes, you'll get the sleep gesture as well. So don't leave until you have that. And uh, now we're just going to clean up. So Homeward Bone, we don't need that because we're going to drop down. We're going to go full circle and drop down. Large club, if you ever need that for whatever reason. I can't imagine you would, but there you go. And then up here, there's going to be two bodies we want to knock down. Definitely knock this one down with a pale tongue which is a um, a covenant item so grab that it's one it's a free one make sure you grab that we'll use that a lot later on and then hit this one down to get the northern trousers um, uh, and everything the northern armor again I'm not going to put it on but if you want to mess around with the armor feel free it is slightly better than what we have on but it is heavier again it's a balancing act 
you can if you want. I'm not going to because I'm going to pick up Flynn's ring later on in, in like five minutes. Which I'm going to, it lowers your equipment load but increases your attack. So I want a low equipment load. Right, you can see there's two cages above, so I'm kind of getting them to kind of drop down. I've switched back to the Pokey Poke. <laughs> I'm going to get them through the, they're just so annoying. Uh, the, the good thing about the, this type of sword as well is you can uh, poke from behind your shield. You can see he's still got the shield up. I'm going to get the alluring skulls. There is a lot more of those guys coming up in a minute. But two dogs before that. So I'll switch back to the regular. So just move slowly forward so you don't trigger both. I don't know how he hit me. Jumped over my shield and bit my shoulder. No idea how he did that. Never seen it happen before. And get this next one. Uh, you can actually move into there. Don't worry about it. There's nothing else going to come after you. It's just he nearly did it as well. And then I did that weird. I I swear I've not figured out <laughs> what triggers that move. You know, you kind of do a backflip. It looks like I did it on purpose. I have no idea how to not do it. So that chest, as you open it, there's going to be a bunch of these guys going to drop down. So I did switch. To the weapon. This goes really badly. Really badly. Uh, I just can't seem to get... Like, you do need to be quite close for this, this weapon to hit them. I just can't seem to get this guy on the stairs. No matter how close I am. Like, I'm not close enough there. Yeah, I get it. But then they start throwing these poo bombs at me. <laughs> and it does break your... Uh, like, this is getting pretty dodgy. These guys don't even move quickly. Um... Yeah, they break your stamina through your shield pretty quickly with those uh, bombs of theirs. So I'm just trying to kind of go into them, take the little bit of damage that they do, and get rid of them. Now the human pine resin, trust me, it was worth going through all that. Human pine resin adds dark to your weapon, and we need that for a particular boss, probably one of the hardest bosses in the game. So you definitely want that human pine resin. And then you want to go going to want to switch back to your bow there are two of these guys up here or girls ladies uh, you can see the other one make sure you don't hit the second one as well you just want to trigger the first one and then you're going to see the uh, you haven't actually seen the range attack there. yeah there you go we well, probably have if you're playing this uh, it does hit the items up there so it might not reach you she knew that was coming then so yeah, two of these together is no fun. So we're just going to cheese them from down here. You can get them kind of in a lock with the uh, the shots if you're any good with the uh, bow, unlike me. Sometimes they'll stagger back quite a lot. Nope, she's she's coming down. Yeah, we'll finish her with the sword, and even this does not go very well. The swing on the sword. This is the grab you need to avoid. Get the hell out. If she starts sort of mumbling, that's when you need to get out. If that grab hits you, you're probably going to be dead. Like, there's damage coming. Like, how is she not dead? <laughs> it comes out of nowhere, the, the damage. And I've got no Esters left now. And that was very poorly done. Now you see why you don't want two of them together. Nope, nothing dropped from you. And we're at the top of the area now. Trust me, this was all worth it. There's two rings up here. We've got Flynn's ring, which reduces your equipment load, but increases your damage, which I'm actually going to wear. Don't worry if you can't do this with your current armor and weapon setup. It's just, I have the space. I will replace it quite quickly. Um, see, I have equipped my, my doing the fat rolling because I have the bow equipped still. If I take the bow away, I'm okay. I'm back to medium. So I'll have to equip the bow when I need it, which is fine. Then we're going to drop down here, onto here, and there's going to be a homeward bone, which is a bit of a hint, kind of, you're stuck, you need to leave, but you're not. What we're actually going to do is a quite a difficult jump. So this one here, you see the, the kind of the platform just right on the back wall there, and jump onto that, maybe do a backup save. If you don't think you, you're going to make the jump, do a backup save and drop down because it's the only way to get here and you need a ring. You've got the mirror set there and the Chloranthy ring. I love the Chloranthy ring. It's one I always wear. It increases the stamina regen speed. So always have that on. 
and I have no Estus and I need to make it back. The other set there is a mirror set, it's kind of a nod to Dark Souls 2. Even in the sort of same, similar sort of place where you meet, I forget her name, uh, oh, what is her name? Uh, kind of a round tower, that's where we met her in Dark Souls 2. Now all I need to do is get past this dog and get to the bonfire. And I've got no health. Ember there, so grab that. Watch out for the uh, the woman, she'll be behind you. She might start uh, doing ranged attacks. There was actually a weapon I missed up here. This is where the two... Yeah, this is where all the... <laughs> He's dead already. You see that drop? <laughs> that does happen. Um, yeah, up there where those firebomb guys were, there's a body hanging. There's a weapon. Uh, it's a lucerne or something like that. Uh, I think it's that one. Either way, it's a weapon I'll never use. I doubt you will either. But if you want it, there is a weapon up there hanging from a body. And I made it just. That that final drop nearly killed me there. But I just did a run for it. And uh, yeah. Whew. Made it. So now it's time to go to the second part of... You can see there's a door at the back end. I've not actually explained about that door up the stairs to the left hand side. There's a large door at the top of some stairs. You can't open it from this side. So that's why we're going around the other way. I'm just waiting for these to kind of... I don't want to have to fight them, so we're just going to wait a moment. As long as she's gone past you, you're kind of all right. And then just drop down here. You'll take a bit of damage, but it's fine. And then you've got the dog. Yeah, that, that jump. I, I, I practiced, tried to practice not doing it and tried to practice doing it. And I still haven't got it down. <laughs> it's random and it can be quite annoying if you accidentally jump off a ledge while doing it. So rat time. Rats in this game are not a problem at all. They don't do poison. They're fine. Just let them jump at your shield. They bounce off. Hit them. They're dead. One, sh one shot them all the time. Uh, there's a Seistus. That's a weapon. It's kind of a punching weapon. There we go. What can be a problem is a large rat like this, though. But <laughs> honestly, it's not. Three hits and that'll die as well. Bloodbite ring is something that it will definitely drop, so make sure you get that. Uh, there is a gate to the left-hand side that's locked. That is the key that I tried to buy, for the, buy from the Shrine Maiden earlier on. We'll come back down here just before we leave the area to do that bit. You can just see in the top there, there's a crystal lizard. Try not to wake it up. Uh, try and take this slowly. Now, if you're embered, like I am, uh, you're going to get invaded here. And you kind of want this invasion to happen because you're going to get a free uh, covenant item for killing it. Now, Holy Knight Hodrick is a bit of a pain in the ass, to be honest, but there is an easy way to kill him. Uh, so I'm going to run up here, try and get this, uh, this lizard. We do definitely need this. So that didn't go well. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, so he's going to appear. You can see the purple guy. That's Hodrick. He is hostile. You're going to get the sharp gem. That is the gem that we need for our weapons. We can't use it yet, but once we can, it's going to practically double <laughs> the damage that we do. It's it's crazy. I don't think it's double. It's a lot, though. You can try and take this guy on. He's good at parrying. Like, now he's going to parry you. He's going to try and charge you. He does quite good attacks. He's quick. Um, if you want to try and fight him and learn his moves, then go for it. There was a quick demonstration of how bad I am at fighting him. Uh, if you want to do it the easy way, run past him and run this way. And you can see there's going to be start seeing arrows in the floor. Big giant arrow. They're arrows that you can see in the floor. Uh, this is where the giant is going to come in and help. I don't know what he's doing. You see he's trying to parry someone there. I'm not quite sure what he's doing. So yeah, there are enemies in front. I wasn't even keeping an eye on him because I know the giant is going to cover me. Now, don't worry about the AoE from the uh, the arrows. It does not hurt you if you're friends with the giant. And it's great. I just like watching them explode. Just stand in front of them. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> now, hopefully Hodrick has actually followed you at this point. He's kind of stuck on the wall with me. He's stuck in that kind of archway. 
Um, so yeah, hopefully he's followed you. Now here's the thing I'm just going to mention is the, around this tree you can see these young white branches. I just picked one up. The other items around the actual tree, the base of the tree, are young white branches as well. If you pick them all up, the giant in the tower will die. Or he does die eventually. We need a ring from him anyway. But um, don't pick them up, just leave them now. So he, he there he goes. <laughs> he just thought he'd probably have to rewind. Uh, I was going to go and take him on and try and force him to come through here. And then we're going to get the giant to hit him with the arrows. Um, yeah, that didn't happen. Uh, so yeah, if you're lucky, just jump on that bit and Hodrick will uh, fall down. You'll, you'll get a vertebra shackle. Now don't worry if you don't want to fight Hodrick or you're not embered. Uh, the vertebra shackle is something we will be farming later. Getting a free one is just nice. Like I said, it's probably the worst of the items to farm. But uh, yeah, don't worry if you don't want to fight him. It's not essential for anything else. You need to farm 30 of them. Uh, having one fewer, or one a head start is not much of a difference, to be honest. Mortician's ashes. Is that what I said? Those are the ashes that we need to take back to the Shrine Maiden. Uh, we can now buy the key once we give them. So leave those two items, the white branches, for now so the uh, giant stays alive. In case you need to come back through here for whatever reason. We'll pick them up later and he'll, he'll die. Uh, just leave them for now. This guy I'm going to ignore. I'm just going to kind of close the loop here and show you where we would have come through the uh, the tunnel from right back at the start. Uh, I also did grab uh, some undead uh, bone shard off that bit where uh, Rod Roderick, Roderick, whatever the hell his name is, died. He won't come back. He's a one-time deal, so if he does die, he's that's it. Titanite, very nice. And we'll go up these stairs. We can get a few more Titanite shards, so we can definitely do this uh, this last upgrade. Hopefully, you've got lucky in your drops as well. Now there is one of those uh, female sort of casters above the big ladies. Where's she gone? Yeah, I think she just drops down as I reach the top of the ladder. She's supposed to be stood here. Tight tonight. So she's below me. You can see me. She's casting those things. Now this goes... This is... I don't even know how much to get out of this. I got the drop. I got the backstab. She's got literally like nothing. Like a fifth of her health. I do the charge. The second one is the only one. I've, I'm stuck. In, I'm stuck against something here. Now blocking is obviously not going to help. <laughs> I can't believe I managed to get out of that. I was stuck on the wall behind me. Uh, yeah, hopefully you do that. Evangelist, that's what they're called. There you go. Uh, the Evangelists. It's better than Big Lady, isn't it? That's probably not very PC. Um, yeah, go down here. There's another Titanite Shard. There, grab that. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know how I got out of that, to be honest. I had no health left and stuck on a wall. Yeah, don't go too far. Don't go running at the two enemies at the top of the stairs. That guy will come busting through the door. And don't go in there just yet. Just take care of this guy because he will follow you. And there is another enemy in there. And of course, it's one of those guys, the thrall. Uh, whip, which is pretty useless to be honest. But I'm just kind of showing you where we are in relation to where we were. So you know when we drop through that building, uh, that hole in the building, um, and we joined the Sunlight Covenant, and we went kind of downstairs, and there was a, a tunnel, and I, I didn't go through it. Going through that tunnel will lead you to where that guy was stood. So that's where we've, we've kind of closed everything off uh, and gone everywhere. And now it's time to go and do the boss. So that's what we'll do. So that crystal lizard, uh, before, if it managed to disappear on you, uh, you'll need to leave the area and then come back. And then it'll come back. But you do want to definitely get it. It's the one upgrade item. that We do need them all, uh, but it's the one that we need the most. As soon as we can use it, we will do. And we're just going to run past and get the, uh, the giant to help us. So again, he's going to be here. Causing all kinds of mayhem. It's great just to watch. <laughs> Stand here watching them. And he does deal with this guy as well. Usually he doesn't actually follow you up here. 
I wasn't expecting him. But uh, yeah, we're going to get a bit of help. <laughs> oh, so much fun. So this boss that we're coming up to is basically we're going to be fighting a big tree and it's not particularly difficult. I mean it might look quite difficult because you can only hurt it in certain places. You don't need any buffs or fire or anything. There you go, thanks for that. Uh, so you should be fine. This guy has red eyes, that means he hurts more so we get rid of him quickly. Because that's what red eyes mean. Either that or he farted on his pillow. <laughs> That was pink eye, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> anyway, sorry. Um, Great Scythe. It's probably quite good. I've never used it. Probably got quite a reach on it. And then we've come full circle, and we're at the top of the stairs where that large door is. So open the door, and it's going to open up a shortcut in case you die in the boss. But, like I've always said in the older videos, just to remove the, the run back, even though it is very short here, you can just kind of run straight back. Uh, make a backup save and if you do, are embered and there are some kind of orangey summon signs then uh, feel free to bring them it'll be another player if they survive you'll get a sunlight medal so they're looking for them as well usually it's people farming them so helping them out is gonna help you out so yes definitely if you're ever a boss and you're embered uh, I wouldn't necessarily go out of your way to become embered because you don't want to waste them um, but if you are, bring them in and get them to help. Go for this guy first. He has red eye, <laughs> pink eye, whatever. Uh, and then we've got the big tree to deal with. So, you can see it's got its little egg sack there at the front. And then it's got one on its uh, left leg there. These are the bits we need to hit. I'm actually waiting for him to... He does kill these enemies. He's, he's not doing a very good job of it right now. I am kind of waiting for him to do that and clear the way a bit. But he's having none of it, so we'll go in and uh, try and force the attack, which I do. It doesn't go very well, but it does clear out quite a few of the enemies. So yeah, the, the sack is what we're aiming for. This means you can't go near him, unfortunately, so you have to wait for that to go. And uh, just deal with some of these while you're waiting. They do keep coming back, so killing them all is not something you want to keep on top of. Just get in there and attack him. So the easiest one obviously to hit is this. Going double handed is going to be the best thing to do. Unfortunately there's another guy who, who stopped the proceedings there. So pop that one, run straight to this leg, get the other one, we should be able to, he's got red eye. So we need to get out of his way before healing. Jesus, that's Dark Souls 101, don't heal in front of an enemy. And uh, yeah, after popping the first one he's going to uh, hit the floor. All the little guys will die when you drop down, you will not, don't worry. And then it's on to phase two. This arm will grab you. So I'm quickly running in trying to get some damage on this. There's one on its back you're going to want to hit. The arm will try to grab. You can see there it slams and it tries to grab as well if you're in front. So kind of stay out of the way of it. Uh, yeah, this one on this on the back is quite a good one to try and hit now. Uh, he will try and do the slam here. Uh, he will try and roll on you, which he's going to try and do on me now. There's one on its elbow. If he does the roll on you, there's one on his shoulder there as well. So if you hit that, oh, wow, that was a bit weird. Um, get the one, stagger him, get the one on his back if you can. Are we there yet? Did I get that? I think I did. Then move to the front. Watch out for the arm. Get the one on his front. And then you can actually hit the arm to finish him off. He's quite simple. He looks really imposing, and because most of him you can't actually damage, it's actually quite simple to get rid of him. And then we're going to get the Transposing Kill and the Curse Rotted Great Wood. Uh, soul and Trophy. He's actually a side boss. You don't need to do this guy. We won't be doing it. It's the only time we're ever going to fight him. Transposing Kill is something we're going to take back to uh, Firelink and give to the little lord that sat on the throne. And that is going to allow us to... Uh, get stuff for our boss souls so that's why we don't want to be using them for regular souls ah. now I'm going to hand in the umbral ash the mortician's ashes uh, once you do that you're going to get more items for purchase or be able to purchase more items most important thing is the grave key that's what we're buying now 1500 
Come on, there we go. Uh, yeah, so grab that. There is the other one there. That's for a tower in here. I'm not going to buy it now. I'll leave that till later on. Grave key is what we need for now. Buy a torch as well if you haven't done yet. 300. You'll definitely have enough now. Do a bit of leveling, but don't use it all up because we want to buy the remainder of um, Yol's spells after we come back. So just do a few. A bit in dex. A bit in vigor. A bit of endurance. Get those stats up a bit and leave a bit left over. How much we got? 6,000. Uh, you'll need roughly, I think it's 9, 14, 16. I think it's 17,000 for all of them. But we have got some already. So burn the undead ash there to make your Estus Flask more potent. And then go back to the dilapidated bridge. And we're going to go and get a loincloth. <laughs> Great. Now we're going to go through this gate where the big rat is, drop down on top of it, and uh, open up that gate. I thought it died, but it didn't. I mean, it's got no health. <laughs> How is it not dead? It must have had one health. So we're going to go and see... Uh, there's going to be a statue in here in a moment. That is uh, the, the Forgiveness statue. If you accidentally hit an NPC and it becomes hostile, don't kill them. Don't ever kill an NPC. Come running back down here and ask for forgiveness, which you're going to see there's a statue to the right here. And then they'll be, they won't be hostile next time you see them, but they always will be hostile if you don't do this. So Velka, so request absolution. Do not request dissolution. We need to be bad basically for this um this ending we're going for so the yol thing we're doing we're becoming more hollow that's essentially what it is in a nutshell uh, with everything we get from yol every level we get from yol we're getting more and more hollow and as you die you become more and more hollow uh, so yeah the we do not want to request that at all or you'll wreck the ending i think it's actually in this part it's actually i think it's a cosmetic thing from that one don't quote me on it, but I'm just saying don't do it. When it becomes most important is with the Firekeeper, uh, the soul, which we will probably not even pick up to make sure you don't even do it. No, we will pick it up for both endings. Sorry, I do apologise. Um, we will pick it up, but we're never ever going to use it because we need the bad ending, so to speak. That's what we're doing now, and we want to be uh, hollow. Uh, so skeletons are quite an easy enemy because you can hit them as they're getting up uh, if you have skeletons with white eyes that means you have to kill them twice always when you kill an enemy uh, a skeleton look for the souls going into your bank in the bottom right so as you kill them look and see if you've got some if you didn't get any from them that means they're going to come back to life all these ones down here are fine they're just you one one kill they're dead but in the future the look out for the souls coming in now we're down, uh, down in the gorge, below everything, obviously. Uh, kill this little guy here for a heavy gem. I think we already have the heavy gem. So kill him anyway. And then that guy with the pot that I said he's kind of waiting for us. There he is. He's up there. That's where we are. We're down underneath the bridge. So quickly run, grab these two titanite shards. He's going to drop down. He scared the crap out of me the first time he did it. <laughs> there he is. He does take a bit of damage coming down. And break his, uh, his little pot there. Yeah, that's the best time to attack is when they can get stuck in that flurry. Oh, come on. <laughs> and that's bleed damage that's building up in the bottom there. Once th that becomes full, you'll take a massive chunk of damage all of a sudden. Right, under here there's going to be an item, the Blessed red and white shield plus one not a shield i will use uh but it's there if you want it so you'll need to equip the bow if you don't have it so if you shoot that down you can just go and grab that of course you do not need to stick with the setup i'm using of course experiment that's what these games are for get the best setup but the one <laughs> if you're a beginner the the one i'm using is the most diverse We'll actually be, be upgrading the uh, the bow as well. So I'm going to have enough Titanite Shards to fully... Up, well, not fully upgrade. 
or upgrade to the point where I, I don't need titanite shards anymore for the weapon. It will move on to large titanite shards, which I don't have any yet. We can't get them yet. Uh, so at that point, we'll start upgrading the bow, because then every time you use the bow, that will do more damage, which is nice. Uh, talisman there, that you need that to be able to use miracles. But if you're doing a miracle build, you will already have one of those. And then we'll go in here, and this is, uh, she's blind, so she's going to ask you to touch her. Uh, so do so, oblige, so touch. And you'll get the prayer gesture. Oh, yes, there you are. And then basically you're going to want to agree to have her come into your, come and work for you, basically. <laughs> come back to Firelink. Oh, so talk to her again. Go through all the dialogue and at the service, that was it. Enter into your service, that's the correct term. Uh, so yeah, of course, accept her service. And then, like all Dark Souls NPCs, she's going to poof and she'll be gone. Because jails aren't all that. So this is Irina of Kareem, as she's saying there. She is our miracle lady. So she's going to go back to Firelink and we can now buy miracles from her. Obviously very important, we need all of them. So we will be buying those, we'll be chipping away with the pyromancy guy and the miracle guy and then there's going to be a sorcery guy as well, or the miracle lady should I say. Um, we need to bring them certain texts so they can teach us more and more, but we'll buy, be buying them as we go. We don't want to be buying them all at the same time and spending all of our souls because we want to be leveling up as well at the same time. They're not going anywhere. So send the lift up if it uh, is is down so because we want to go down now we're moving on we're done with the area so we're getting the hell out of here uh, this guy in here I think they're called outright outright outrider knights yes yeah we'll go with that these guys are horrible <laughs> some of the hardest and I think I've said that for quite a few probably one of the harder enemies just casual enemies in the look how fast that was that's not even funny <laughs> Uh, get him to come up here, kind of bait him up, run for the door. You'll be invincible when opening the door, don't worry, he can't hurt you. So just run, open the door, get through it. Uh, light the bonfire if you want, if you're worried about that. Uh, and then if not, kind of bait him back down. I mean, just how quick they are. Watch, here he comes. Where is he? There, how fast that is. It's not, <laughs> that's ridiculous. Frost damage is doing there, and then at this point you can just kind of stand where I am, get the bow out, and um, yeah, shoot him in the ass until he dies. <laughs> that forest gump, it bit me in the buttocks. I'm sorry, that was terrible. Uh, yeah, just keep shooting him. He's, this is not essential. I'm just doing it for the souls, and he drops the Irithyll straight sword. If you want to use that, obviously it's, you can do. Uh, but yeah, just get rid of him. He's a one-off, so he'll never come back. We actually never need to come through here again. There's no reason. But uh, just get rid of him. He's basically like Vought, but better. More aggressive. So he will automatically drop the sword and you'll grab it. There you go. So this is Road to Sacrifices, this is going to be our next video, but we're going to go back and we're going to do the cleanup. So at the end of this, uh, all of the videos, I'll do this sort of cleanup section. Uh, drop everything off, spend souls, buy whatever. Meet new NPCs, exhaust new dialogue, everything like that. So it's actually quite an important step, this, to be honest. Hopefully you're not skipping it and you're still here. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this is a new NPC. He, I think, he joined at the beginning, of, at the end of the um, the last video, but we've not spoke to him yet. He's not important at this point, anyway. But speak to him again to get the cracked red eye orbs, which means you can uh, invade other players, which we're not going to do. Uh, they're cracked as well, so you can only use them once. We will get an infinite use one later on, once we finish his quest line. Then we're going to go down here and speak to Ludlick, Lud, Ludric, Lud, that guy that sat there. What the hell is his name? Lud, Lud, yeah. This man here, and we're going to give him the transposing kiln. So again, exhaust, dialogue, etc., etc. Ludleth, 
other. Let's go with that. And we're actually going to do one here. We're going to do a transposition. So you can see all this is basically where you get all the boss weapons. So you cash in a boss soul and you get their weapon. But you also get rings and spells. So that's why it's very important not to use them willy nilly. So get that ring. It's actually a ring we're going to use for a while as well. It's not great, but it helps. Uh, if you have a slot, if there are other rings you prefer to be using right now, it's better than the tear stone ring. Uh, basically, HP will come back with every few hits that you do, so it's 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 helpful. You get a decent chunk of health back, so it's quite good. It's the other side, the right eye, that we're going to use. So no Esther Shard, reinforce. Uh, hopefully, you can get that top tier now. Well, up to I've got nine, so I can definitely do it. Uh, so upgrade that, and then we're going to speak to the new NPCs that we have. So we've got the pyromancy guy that we uh, rescued from the cage. You can actually start on the bow as well, if you like, now, uh, with the titanite shards, longbow. So speak to him, he's going to give you the pyromancy flame, uh, and then we, you can reinforce it to make it stronger. It's basically a weapon, it, it acts like that. And then you've got the pyromancies, which he just has a few for now. Uh, we'll not buy any yet. We'll save them. We'll, we'll get them eventually. And then we'll come down here and his Irina. 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 She's our miracle lady. So do the same. Speak to her. And then you can learn miracles. And of course, later on, she will have more for us. And then purchase the ring. You might as well. It's very cheap. 300. Just grab it. We need it. So get it. So it's done. And then we're going to finish off Yol's sorcery, so it doesn't matter if he dies. Uh, not that you're going to kill him, he will die at a certain point. Obviously, I'm going to let you know when that's going to happen. Uh, he will die if you've used all five of the um, his upgrades, he will die. I did mention buy all of his things before doing that, so hopefully you've done that. Uh, so grab all of them, so that's why we're doing it now even use some of the sort of hard souls uh, to get enough to buy everything so you can do use all of his upgrades so if he does die on you it's fine we've got his gesture we've got his spells we've got his extra levels it's okay for him to go he wants it it's fine magic shield there we go got all five I've not done, I think I've only done the one, haven't I? I haven't died yet, so <laughs> I will come back uh, and once, it, once it's time for him to go uh, then I'll, I'll just kill myself four times in a row and uh, get them then. And that's it. That's it for this video. Uh, I'm just going to go here and unload all the weapons and armor that I don't need just to clean up the inventory a bit. It just helps when you need a certain weapon, which it does happen later in the game. I'll switch between uh, weapons. There's a wolf sword I'm going to be using, so I want to find that nice and quickly. And uh, yeah, just unload anything you don't need. Keep a pointy point just in case. They're always good to have on you, and uh, the rest can go. And that's it. So thanks very much for watching. I'll see you on the next one.